This is the Architect Exam Podcast, the official podcast of the Young Architect Academy. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the ARE Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about specifications. My name is Emily. I'm a registered architect who absolutely loves specifications. That's right. I love them. I was at first intimidated by them, didn't fully understand them, but once I did, I genuinely love them and I see how they lead to more successful projects. So recently, I helped Young Architect develop our CDT Certification 101 course, which has a lot to do with specifications. It's entirely focused on understanding and mastering specs. So that's a big part of why I'm so passionate about this topic. So again, I know it can be a little bit intimidating. There's so many different types of specifications, so it's hard to really navigate what to use when and why they exist. Or you may even feel that they're a little bit boring because they're not as fun as and exciting as drawings. You know, a lot of us in the field of architecture focus on design and drafting and drawing. So the written specification is, you know, maybe a little boring. But I'm here to convince you that once you understand the value of specifications, that you'll start loving them too. I really want to help to demystify specifications and who creates them. In fact, I feel so strongly about this that I convinced Mike that we needed a mini-series dedicated just to this, just to specifications, and to share it here on the ARE podcast. Our goal with this series is simple, to help you feel more comfortable with specifications and clearly understand why they're essential in architecture, construction, and really any building project. The goal here is not to have you memorize everything I'm about to say. It's really just to take the edge off. And I'm just going to, in my own words, share with you what specifications are to help you feel more comfortable with them. We also want to acknowledge that specifications are a massive, massive topic. There is a never-ending amount of detail and nuance when it comes to writing, interpreting, and coordinating specifications. This series isn't about overwhelming you with all of that. It is a very complex and technical topic. So my goal is to make this very beginner friendly and approachable so that whether you have a little experience or a lot, it's just an easy episode to take in. I'd like for you to simply understand when specifications are needed and where they play a role in projects that you are working on. So think of this podcast as a friendly, practical intro to specs, one that will help you why they matter, how to engage with them without getting lost in the weeds. I'm going to aim to keep everything today very clear, conversational, and most importantly, helpful. And before I do my deep dive on specs, this is why I care so deeply about specifications. I had a frustrating moment on a project that I worked on several years ago where the written specifications really saved me in what would have been, you know, I don't want to say lawsuit, but a real point of contention between the contractor and I and a real issue. So this was early on in my career. I was involved in a commercial project where everything seemed perfectly planned. The drawings looked great. The design was great. But towards the end of the project during, I think it was right before the punch list walkthrough, I noticed that there was a railing missing next to the parking lot, like a walkway next to the parking lot. And I didn't want to assume that the contractor missed it. I was wondering if it was still, you know, something that they had planned to do. So when I asked the contractor about it, they said that it wasn't in the drawings. And of course, at this point in the project, I had done the drawings a year and a half prior. So I kind of panicked and checked the drawings, checked the site plan. And there, in fact, wasn't a railing drawn in the location that I had pointed out to the contractor. And, you know, initially... I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, anyone would know that a railing is needed here between this walkway and the parking lot, even just for safety standards. But it was unfair of me to assume that the contractor would know that. But when I went and referenced the specifications and looked up what I had written and what my team had written a year and a half prior, the handrail or the railing at that walkway was clearly defined. All of the standards, uh, material, um, who was installing it. So this was a classic scenario of specifications versus drawings and which one overrules. And they're actually complementary. So lucky for me, I was able to bring that to the contractor's intention and let the contractor know it may have been missing from the drawings, whether that was, you know, a layer that didn't get turned on before we made the PDFs or even if it was just a printing resolution error. The railing may have not been clearly shown in the drawings, but it was clearly defined in written word in the specifications. 
So the contractor realized their oversight in comparing the two documents and quickly mobilized their crew to make sure that that railing got installed in place before the punch list walkthrough. So such a small detail can make a big difference when it comes to the quality of your project, the schedule of your project, and even just communicating on the day-to-day with the building team and construction team. And we were able to avoid, you know, accusations. We were able to avoid any kind of frustrating moments by just saying, hey, this was in the specifications. We need you to install this and on time. The written specifications is a great way to strengthen your project just in case anything in the drawings gets misinterpreted or is missing. It's really a good way to make sure that the final intention and performance of the built project makes it through all the way through the end of construction. And having those written specifications will lead to a more enjoyable experience throughout the construction administration process. Uh, Working with contractors and their team or just communicating with them, it will just overall be much easier process and experience. Okay, enough about me. Let's jump into specifications and what they are and why you should even care about them. So in the simplest terms, specifications are written documents that describe in detail the quality and types of materials, products, and workmanship required for a construction project. Think of them like detailed instructions that accompany the project drawings. There are key differences between drawings and specifications. The drawings are going to show you what and where things go in a project. It will show dimensions, locations, and the overall shape and size of things. Think of the drawings like a table of contents or an outline for the written specifications. They'll be referenced back and forth with each other. Now, specifications will tell you how something should be built or installed, not what or where. What or where are the drawings? The specifications will detail how something's installed or finished and precisely what type of material or products should be used to complete that. Specifications are in much greater detail, specifically telling you which material, manufacturers, and how to install it. That type of information would be way too much information to fit on a drawing set. It would get crowded very quickly, so that's why we define all that information in great detail in written word separately and in addition to the drawings. So drawings are our visual guides and specifications are the written guides in a project. They work together. They're both needed. And they give everyone involved in the project a clear and complete understanding of what is expected. So while navigating specifications, there are three main sections in most specification documents. There are general products, and execution in that sequence. So general will cover administrative and procedural requirements, references, and project conditions. The products will specifically state the material, equipment, and products to be used. And then execution will detail how the product should be installed or applied, including the workmanship standards and test requirements. You're listening to the Architect Exam Podcast, your guide to passing the A-R-E. So why would all of those details be important? Let me break that down further and explain what good specifications are and why they matter so much. So first off, specifications provide clarity and reduce ambiguity. Everyone involved on a project, the architect, the contractor, subcontractors, suppliers, and even the project owner, a client, needs to know exactly what materials and quality standards and methods of installation are expected on this project. Without good specifications, things can quickly become confusing, which will lead to mistakes or delays or really expensive fixes, and none of the parties involved on a project want that. So next, specifications serve as important legal documents as well. If there's a dispute or a misunderstanding in the field during construction, the specifications are often the first place people look to clarify responsibilities. So think of my story earlier with the railing and the walkway in the parking lot. I did check the drawings first, but I quickly went to the specifications next to see if we had covered that area. So specifications are legally binding. So getting them correct and getting them right protects you, the writer, and anyone else in the project, really, from any disputes and liability. Again, the specifications are complementary to the drawings, so one does not overrule the other. They should work together. 
good specifications. And what I mean by good specifications are well-written specifications. So well-written specifications will maintain quality control. They set clear benchmarks for materials, workmanship, ensuring that that final built product and project meets the architect's vision and the client's expectations. Finally, specifications help contractors accurately price and bid projects. Clear specifications allow for fair and accurate comparisons between contractor bids and the project budget that was initially set. So that can really help to prevent any surprises once you get those bids submitted. And additionally, great specifications and well-written specifications will significantly impact long-term building performance and durability. Proper material selection and clearly defined installation processes ensure that the building is going to function well for years, minimizing maintenance and repair costs. So we want the building to not only function well and look great on day one, when we turn the keys over to the building owner, we want it to look great after year one, year five, 10, 20, 100. And well-written specifications can do that for us. Okay, let's make things a little bit simpler. I love a good analogy, so I'm going to use an analogy to help all of this make sense. So think of specifications like a cooking recipe. Drawings would be like the finished photo of a recipe, the finished product, you know, your meal in front of you. And you can see how that photo looks, but you can look at that photo, but you wouldn't be able to understand what it took to get to that finished product. You won't be able to extract all the ingredients and the sequence of cooking from just a finished product and finished photo. So because we can't always identify all the ingredients of a meal just by looking up an image of a finished product, we are going to need to know all of the details, ins and outs, and sequence of what it took to get to that finished, beautiful, Instagram-worthy photo of your food. (laughs) So think of the specifications and the finished building product the same way. The specifications are detailed instructions. For instance, exactly how much flour, sugar you would need, the oven temperature, the right baking dish, the cooking time. It's a really detailed description of everything that's required and the timing of it. If you risk skipping any of those details, the dish probably won't turn out like that beautiful end product photo that initially inspired you. Here's another analogy. Think of buying a new car. The drawings show you the finished product again. So, you know, a car is the finished product. You you can take in the design, the color of the car, the style of the car. But you may not necessarily know all the specifications it took to get there, such as the type of engine, the horsepower, interior materials, safety ratings, or even, you know, what country the car was made in. Those details will eventually truly define what the quality and the performance is of that car, but you only really see the finished product. So think about recipes and car specifications when you think about specifications for your drawings. Architectural specifications make sure that that final outcome meets your expectations exactly as required. So why wouldn't you want to include that extreme level of detail when building a building? You want a building that, again, is going to last you, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 years. And so you need all of those details that might necessarily be too much information to fit on a set of drawings. So you'll need that set of documents that tells you all the in and outs and all the ingredients of what it takes to build your building. All right, we're almost done, guys. Hang in there with me. Uh, Before I wrap up, I want to just quickly summarize everything that I've been, uh, you know, saying to you so far today. So first, we talked about what architectural specifications actually are, which, again, they are detailed written documents that complement the drawings by specifying quality and materials. And it adds that extra detailed information that wouldn't fit on the drawings. And they're important because they provide clarity and effectively communicate the project intent and which will help to avoid costly mistakes in the future and it avoids any misinterpretation or you know ambiguity when someone reads them. They also offer legal protection by being a clear outline for the project and therefore ensure quality control, which will also lead to more accurate cost estimates or bids from contractors that are reviewing a drawing set of bid set with the specifications. So this will improve long-term building performance and reduce future costs. And all parties involved in this project will just have a more enjoyable experience when this is done well and done early on. 
So specifications are truly the unsung heroes of every successful construction project. They might not be as glamorous as drawings and beautiful renders, but they really are essential tools for turning ideas into high quality buildings. So thank you so much for listening in, everyone. And thank you for following my huge passion for specifications and why they make projects better and more successful. In our next episode, we're going to tackle some big misconceptions about specifications. There's myths that may be holding you back from truly appreciating the importance of specifications, and we're going to address those and put those myths away. <laughs> so until then, keep designing, keep building, and remember, great projects start with great specifications. Thanks for listening to the Architect Exam Podcast. Ready to take your studying to the next level? Visit our online ARE Architecture School website at academy.youngarchitect.com to learn more about how we can help you. See you next time.